Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I'm going to make a Jacob's Ladder card and I'm starting off by cutting my card base. I can get all six from a single sheet of US letter size cardstock. So I've cut six panels in pink to four and a quarter wide by three and a half tall. I've cut another six panels in purple to the same dimensions, four and a quarter wide by three and a half tall. In total, you don't necessarily have to use two different colors, but on camera, I feel like it does help to um, demonstrate it a little bit better. Plus, I like the color variation. I think it's kind of neat. So if you wanted, you could cut all of your bases to the same size. I chose four and a quarter wide by three and a half tall because I can get all six <laughs> from a single sheet of US letter size paper without too much waste. And that's the only reason. You could make this any dimension that you'd like. It doesn't have to be rectangular either. It can be square. So this is really up to you, totally arbitrary. And what I do recommend though is to use something heavyweight. So if you have something like a hundred pound cover weight or heavier, even lightweight chipboard would be good for this too because the heavier each of these panels is, the easier the mechanism is going to operate. For my mats and layers, I am using this gorgeous pattern paper. It's from the Not Too Shabby Shop January subscription box. And in that subscription box, there are actually two 6x6 paper pads. I'm using the one that's called A Day to Remember. And I'm cutting my mats and layers. Well, I am actually going to get two mats from a single sheet of six by six. So the first one I've cut to four inches wide by three and a quarter tall. And then there is a piece left over that's two and three quarters tall by four inches wide, but I end up cutting that um, further down so that I can actually add another um, matte layer of cardstock behind it and that way I can actually use that entire four inch strip and I don't have to cut into another sheet of six by six paper and the extra solid color cardstock matte layer just adds more weight to the these panels which is going to help everything operate a little bit more smoothly but it's also a, a nice touch to the to have the double mats so as I'm just sorting through and um, picking out my pattern papers, one of the things I was looking for was to try to get as many non-directional <laughs> patterns as I could because that's going to really help you be able to at least assemble this base layer before you start decorating um, a little bit more uh, quickly. But there were some really gorgeous pattern papers that I really, really wanted to use that are unfortunately directional. So I wasn't able to avoid non-directional papers entirely, but obviously if you were doing this for the first time, using non-directional pattern paper might be one way to simplify this if you want. I'm going to also sort my two, um, into two stacks each, uh, color of card base. So remember I started with six pink panels and six purple panels and I've, I'm cutting my mats and layers for each of those and just stacking everything as it should be assembled and then I'm going to split those stacks into the pink base and then the purple base and hopefully as we start assembling It'll make a little bit more sense because you can tell which stack I'm pulling <laughs> the panels from. And um, this card, it's really easy to put together once you've seen it, but it does, does take a while to put together just because of how much cutting there is. Because in total, I've got 12 bases that I need to assemble and each of them has a matte layer, sometimes um, two. So what I'm going to do is glue down what I can glue down. So anything that is non-directional, 
I am going to go ahead and glue all the mats and layers down now. W the things that are directional, um, I'm going to save that for later because I find that personally less confusing, but if you want to glue it down now, you could as well. Um, it's just whatever helps you to stay organized. And as I'm sorting everything, everything out, I'm going to try to keep everything in the pink pile and the purple pile so that I have an equal number in each pile. Six panels of pink, six panels of purple. I'm using Kalau all-purpose glue. This is a solvent-based glue, and as such, it doesn't actually absorb into your paper, and it actually kind of makes it even stronger because it does sort of add an extra layer between your papers. And if you are using something that is on the thinner side, a solvent-based glue is great for that too. Uh, for the nature of it not actually soaking into the papers, there's um, little chance of it actually warping your papers or showing glue lines. So that's the glue that I've chosen, but you could definitely use whatever you have. A dry adhesive would work great too. So now for to prepare for our panels. What I'm going to do is on one panel, I am going to make some pencil marks for where I want to position my ribbon. I want one ribbon to run down the center, and then I want a ribbon on both ends. And I gave myself three eighths of an inch in from the left edge and from the right edge. And that seems to work pretty well. And so once I have those marked off, then I'm going to just draw a line with my T-square ruler so I can really make sure that those are very straight. And I'm going to draw a line, pencil mark all the way down. And what I'll do is transfer all of these pencil marks to all of the other pink panels. So there's going to be six pink panels in total. And what I like to do is I just like to butt them up like this. And then that first panel has the pencil mark on it. And if everything is lined up, you can just draw straight across and transfer those lines. So you don't have to measure and do individual tick marks on each and every panel. Just use that first one as a reference and line everything up against that. And then I'm going to pull out the rest of my pink panels and transfer the lines to, to each of them. You do not need to do this with your purple panels or the second half. So you basically only need to do this for one set of six, your six panels, and that's it. And of course you can if you wanted, you don't have to use two different colors, but it it might be easier, you know, to distinguish which panel um, needs the lines versus which panel doesn't <laughs> if if you do have them separated by color as well. Just it can make it a little bit e easier to distinguish, but uh, these can all be the same. The whole idea, though, is just that only half of them need to be marked. Then what I'm going to do on these panels is I will use some double sided uh, dry adhesive tape. And on the back of each of the bases, I am going to run three lines of adhesive. Now recall for the pink panels, I drew a line um, going down the short edge, but I'm running my adhesive down the long edge. And that's intentional. That's so that when I apply the ribbon, it's just going to tack down in each of those three spots. And that's just so that if I need to move it, I can. But then when I go to put my adhesive on my purple stack, I'm going to run my strips orthogonally to the pink. So as you can see, I'm going to leave them on my screens just so that you can see the pink panels are running um, left to right. The purple panels are running top to bottom. That way, when we glue these two panels together, they are going to offer you a lot of coverage in terms of um, getting adhesive 
around all four edges on the outside and some adhesive through the center as well. So um, with the adhesive applied to each of these uh, 12 panels in total, uh, most of the prep work is basically ready and then we can start to assemble. The last key ingredient to a Jacob's Ladder card is the ribbon. So to figure out how uh, long of a stretch of ribbon you need, you'll need three in total. But whichever direction your ribbon um, is getting applied or glued to your card base, take that length and multiply it by 11. And that's how long of a piece of ribbon you need. And you'll need three of those all the same length. And uh, here I'm going to do the same thing just to make the demonstration uh, e a little bit easier to follow, hopefully. The, my purple ribbons are going to be on the outer edges and they are facing, they are always going to be operating in the same direction. My pink ribbon in the center is going to be the opposite. It will always be the opposite of the two purple panels. So I've glued, I've tacked down my ribbon to my first pink panel. And now I'm going to glue down a purple panel on top of my pink panel. <laughs> so we're always going to be gluing um, the purple panel onto the pink panel. So that's why um, the adhesive was applied so that it's sort of, they're, when they meet up, they're gonna give you really good coverage um, all the way around all four edges and through the center. But even with the dry adhesive, I still like to put a little bit more of that um, Kalal all-purpose glue just to further strengthen things up. Now, every time we um, put a piece of cardstock down, we need to stretch the ribbon across that length. So I did that. Um, but don't worry, I'll do it again in case you miss that. And with the pink panel, this is we're looking at the back side of the pink panel. So when the pink panel goes down, it goes down with the adhesive facing up. And I'm using the pencil marks on my pink panel to line up my ribbon. So all I'm going to do is just continue to zigzag my ribbon up and down as I add a new panel to this stack that I'm building. And the pencil lines make it really easy to um, line up your ribbon. You just wanna make sure that you're not pulling it too tightly to where it's, it's really taut because it actually helps a little bit if there's just a smidge of, of slack. But you do, you don't want to leave it too loosey goosey. So you can see there's just, you can see a little bit of a gap, barely anything. So now we have exposed adhesive here on the pink panel. And so what you want to do is you'll want to take a purple panel and stack that on top. And that's going to go adhesive side down. So you're always going to be placing your panels so they are back to back and then front to front. So I'll get a little bit of that all-purpose glue here just to strengthen it, give it a nice strong hold, line everything up, and then I'm going to zigzag my ribbons again. So the purple ribbons are at the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the two purple ribbons down. They're not going to get glued because now we're looking at the front of the purple panel. So I'm going to um, pull these ribbons down. They are free. They're not attached to anything. I'm going to put a pink panel down and it's front facing downwards, glue facing up. And once I remove the paper liners from the dry adhesive, that gives me three spots to kind of tack my ribbon down to because my adhesive is running left to right, but my ribbon is running um, top to bottom. 
And these purple panels, you might not be able to see it so well on camera, but these are the ones that had the pencil marks. So that's how I'm able to line up my ribbon so that it stays nice and straight. Don't stress too, too much about getting this super duper straight. Just try your best. As long as it's pretty close, that's good enough for the mechanism to flow. Now we do still have adhesive exposed, so I'm gonna take um, the next one off of my purple stack. And the reason why I keep opening it up is because I am trying to bear in mind that some of my panels have a double matting. So I am trying to kind of keep in mind the order of the patterns that I want to be visible as well. But certainly if you, wanted you could definitely just get your base layers down and then um, glue your cards on top of your mats and layers on top of that later and you'll see I'll have to do that with some of them so again the purple went down I'm going to flip my ribbons so that um, they cross over that panel the purple one is what we're looking at that's already on the stack and the pink one is what I'll add. So the pink ones will always be face down, adhesive side up, and then I zigzag my ribbons again. So you just keep on doing this until you have all of your panels attached. And so that's what I mean by once you kind of get going, it can go quickly but it's a lot of the same step over and over again. So that's why it can take a little bit of time to make one of these, but it's really fun because at the end of the day, you have something that is really fun to play with. So this would be really great for making a keepsake, maybe putting some uh, photos in onto these panels, I think would be really wonderful. So I think it could be a really fun, almost like a, a little album, like a little mini album. I think that would be great. And it's it's a bit of a toy too, because they, it is fun to play with it. And so I, I really like um, putting these together. I'm making mine as cards that I can give along with maybe, I mean, this is going to end up being really thick because it's just at the base, it's um, 12 layers of cardstock and that's before mats and layers. <laughs> so, and so this is the sort of, if you are sending it as a card, it's gonna be like an inch, maybe even more thick. So it's the sort of thing that you would give maybe in an umbrella box and maybe if you had to ship it, you would send it along with maybe a, a physical gift. So it's it's a special kind of card that I think is um, can be a great keepsake as well. And so what you need, just need to remember is always, always zigzag your ribbon whenever uh, you add a panel and the two stretches of ribbon that are on uh, the outer edge, they need to travel together <laughs> as they're zigzagging. And that's why I chose alternating um, colors of ribbon so that you can kind of see the two that are meant to go together always move together and they're in the same color. And we're getting down to the to the end here. Um, I think this is going to be my last little stretch. So you can see um, I just have a very little bit that needs to get snipped off. And uh, again, if you, if you need to find the dimension for your ribbon, I think I mentioned it, but um, just in case the edge that you're traveling along, so my ribbon's traveling along the three and a half inch edge, you take that length and you multiply it by 11. And that gets you the length of each of your three ribbons and you'll have just a smidge left over and that's going to be perfect. The other thing is when you are zigzagging your ribbon, I, I pulled it quite taut the first time I made this and, and it still works. Everything still works okay, but I found that if you just pull it so that it's not loose, 
if there's like a little sliver of a gap that you can see between the panels, that's okay. That might actually make things flow a little bit more smoothly just because of the fact that um, if you do start adding a lot of mats and layers to this, that gap uh, helps so that it can actually flip <laughs> because without a gap there, it's, it's it might be a little bit harder to, to flip over. And now remember some of my papers were directional. So that's why what I'm going to do is take the directional pattern papers and add them now that I can determine which side is up. <laughs> and the reason why this can be a little bit tricky, and it's not, it's just that I think it, it helps me anyway in the assembly if I just do it when I can actually see how everything looks all together. But what you want to do is I would decorate, at least at this point, if, especially if you are using directional pattern papers, I would decorate one side completely first, at least with the pattern paper layer. And I think, in fact, I decorated the pattern paper and I put the um, ephemera to decorate everything um on one side completed first. And then I played with the mechanism to force it to flip all the way down to um, get the back side of it. And then I decorated because when you flip this over on the back, everything's actually going needs to be attached upside down so that when it flips, it's right side up. And that makes a lot more sense when you actually play with the mechanism and see it. And that way, um, and that's the reason why I like to leave the decorating until I have it complete so that it is a little bit less confusing to, um, to me when I go to start decorating the backside. But um, once you have your base done, it's just a lot of fun to decorate and you can decorate it however you'd like. On my first Jacob's Letter card, which I did for my flip video of the Spellbinders January Club Kits, I used a lot of die cut um, elements. I think it was from the small die of the month and that was a lot of die cutting. For this card, because the Not Too Shabby Shop box of the month comes with two 6x6 paper pads and each of the paper pads ha comes with coordinating ephemera pack. I'm going to decorate <laughs> with ephemera, which makes it really easy because it's already full color. It's already cut for you. I am going to use some of the stamps. I think I ended up using two out of the three stamps that come in the subscription box and that's where I'll get some of my sentiments from. But you can see um, this is fun to play with and it's hard to show on camera at a top-down angle. But once all of the uh, layers are on, then it's just fun time just to play collage up some of these elements. I thought that I might actually mix and match between the two packs of ephemera because they do work really well together but in the end I decided I'm just going to stick with my um, the pattern papers or the ephemera pack that actually coordinates with this pattern paper pack. If you are interested in the not too shabby shop box of the month. You can get the full box of the month and um, that will come with three six, four by six stamp sets, two six by six paper packs, each with their own coordinated ephemera pack. And as well, uh, there is the option of getting the junior box. And with the junior box, you'll get one 6x6 paper pad with its matching ephemera, and you'll get two out of the three stamp sets. Additionally, um, available for separate purchase, I believe the stamp sets will also have coordinating dies. So if you're not a fan of fussy cutting, then you can get that. But that's an 
uh, option that is outside of the box. That way you can, if you just want the stamps, you can sign up and subscribe to get the box monthly. And by subscribing to uh, receive it monthly, you will also get a bit of a discount. I think it's 18%. So that's a little bit of a nice little um, savings if you know that you like getting the kits each month. So here's a final look at my card today, all fully decorated. And it's really fun putting these together, even though it does it can take a little bit of time to just to cut and prepare everything. It does go pretty quickly once you start, um, and especially once you start decorating, because I feel like that <laughs> that's part of where a lot of the fun is. And there's so much to decorate because you have 12 panels. So this is a great one also to use um, for if you want to like smash <laughs> a paper pad, you could definitely do that with projects like these. You could probably make quite a few of them, but it's, um, it's pretty great for showcasing a lot of beautiful pattern papers like the A Day to Remember paper pad from the Not Too Shabby Shop. Thanks for joining me on this one and until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye!